What would I say generally about going, uh, going uh, international? I think the Irish are underestimated. We're again going to be underestimated. By, we were massively overestimated in the last number of years. Uh, Paul mentioned my time with Athlone Extrusions. I worked in a very difficult commodity business. I seem to choose my career path rather without too much uh, forethought. But um, that business was a very difficult commodity business in the UK in the 80s. And uh, we did tremendous market share. We got tremendous market share gains simply because we were completely underestimated and stayed below the radar. And Accord, of course, played that role very well. Uh, and I think our historical uh, status as, a co as being colonized rather than, rather than the other way around helps us. We are the underdog and we should maintain that position. And I think we, we, we certainly are also liked. And if I talk about some of the major markets that we deal in, Germany, Spain, Italy, and dealing with governments, regional governments, and airports there, in my experience, uh, we have a running start over, say, people from Britain or another large country, which is immediately suspected rather than welcomed, in my experience. You've got to identify the key competitive advantage. Why are you going to make a big investment going abroad uh, if you don't have something special to offer over and above the incumbents, over and above what may not be there at all at the moment? We have a majority, a simple majority of our routes are monopolies for us. We don't, nobody else flies on them, simply because nobody else can afford the fare to be there. So we're creating new markets. Now, we've got to have the confidence to think that we can afford the fare that's going to stimulate that traffic in the first place. And we cancel 10% of our routes, but we regard that as just a learning experience. And you've got to critically experience the different markets. Um, I was, I'm going to embarrass him now, but I, 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 I was speaking with Liam O'Mahony earlier on, and CRH is a company that I uh, have massive admiration for, and I had the pleasure of watching him make a presentation in New York a few years ago to investors, and he went through, I would say, without uh, exaggeration, a hundred different companies in his group, of which there are many hundreds, I think, but just a hundred, and he talked with intimate knowledge about the management and about the market. And they are the two single most important things, knowing as he would do the fundamentals otherwise of the business as well. And anybody who doesn't know the market and go out and experience it, because there are differences, is kidding themselves about the fact that they might have a great product. But there might be nobody out there who thinks it's great or needs to be convinced of it. You've got to do that. And we spend a lot of time just walking around, you know? And people talk about economic statistics, and I have a lot of time for economic statistics, but you can't beat, you know, as the farmer said, seeing the cow, you know? And in my experience, you've got to do that before you even put any money into a project uh, and try and experience the market, even as a consumer yourself. Because I'm not an expert in that market, but you get over, over time experience and touch and feel, and you talk to your colleagues about it and see what they think about it. But that's ultimately where your judgment is going to stand or fall. I don't want to be prescriptive about all businesses. You know, our business is a particular type of business. Uh, and you talked about the competition not being able to do things. I think the one message I would leave from our business is choose your competitors well. And you know, you couldn't invent our competitors better, you know? Um, and all of them. So, you know, we, we enter the business similar, say, to the telecoms. It would be like being Aircom or, or an individual uh, uh, phone company in Europe, Vodafone, and all your, all your competitors were government owned. It would be, you know, a dream, really. Um, so, we're, and the other lesson from that is if you want to start a low fares airline, you don't start with a high fares airline, you know? So you start from nothing, or maybe even a failed high fares airline, which Ryanair was. So a lot depends on the flexibility that you start with and the flexibility, like with a blank page, etc. So, you know, don't make us out to be, uh, you know, extraordinary. We're not extraordinary. We just, uh, we were lucky in many, uh, you know, uh, in many aspects of the business. Michael has a public image that, will, that serves us uh, very well. Our, our marketing budget, for example, is a fraction of EasyJet's, a lot of it due to the PR we generate free of charge through him. You know, charging for the lose, all this kind of stuff, standing on board, all jokey stuff. We had 565 entries on Google News within 12 hours of that lose story. You couldn't buy that. You know, everything from the, the Sydney 
Herald to the Los Angeles Times and every newspaper in between. Uh, and it was literally, he dreamt that up uh, at 7.30 one morning, BBC were over about a story which BBC, in classic BBC form, had cottoned on to about three months after Sky had broken the story, right? Uh, about some charge we were increasing. I can't remember what it was. And uh, they were in the car park interviewing. I remember I drove past, I was going in to work, and uh, the, the interview was, this BBC guy was just going from one uh, phase of surprise to the next. You charge for this and you charge for that? And Michael thought, this is ridiculous to himself. And he, I give him a really good one. He said, and we're going to charge people to go to the loo. And it went on from there, and by 5 o'clock that evening, we had 565 mentions on Google News, and it just went on and on and on. And the advertising, like, we spend about 30 million on advertising in about 130 newspapers. We can find ourselves largest newspaper advertising, a little bit of radio as well. We couldn't buy that kind of stuff. So it does work very well, but it's not applicable to every business, you know? But, like, he, uh, he can, uh, he's, he's, his ability to, um, and his reputation abroad is, is a massive uh, value to us as well. And that comes from, I mean, people regard him very seriously abroad. People wonder about uh, Michael O'Leary in particular and his almost religious zeal um, and his focus. And uh, it is warranted in our business, absolutely warranted in our business. Uh, and some people may not be as public about it, but I can guarantee you that if you look at the, the key ingredient behind the success of many of the businesses that we're talking about today or elsewhere. It is the commitment and the, the zeal of one or a number of other individuals together who actually make it work. Our business is very simple. It's a very simple business. Uh, we couldn't run it otherwise, frankly. And, you know, from our perspective, um, just to be continually, it's a little bit like Monster Rugby, you know? You'll grind them down in the 75th minute and you'll score three or four tries when they're on the ground, you know? But you keep at it. And uh, if you're sharp enough and if you're committed enough, it's amazing how many people will fall over in the long run.